Good day all. Welcome to another edition of Dr. Ishii's Hematology and Blood Transfusion Science Lecture Series. Today we will be discussing Duffy Blood Group System. Objectives of this class. It is expected that at the end of this lecture, you should be able to mention the antigens in Duffy blood group system. Describe antibodies in Duffy blood group system. Understand the genetics and inheritance of Duffy antigens. You should also be able to understand the relationship between Duffy antigens and malaria parasite infection and explain the clinical importance of Duffy antibodies. This Duffy blood group system was discovered in 1950 by a group of scientists called Boss Morris Zimmer Peking. The first antibody in Duffy blood group system, anti Duffy A, was discovered in the serum of a hemophilic patient that had been multi transfused by this group of scientists. This blood group was named after this man whose name was Mr. Duffy, in whom this antibody was discovered. A year later, in 1951, Anti Duffy B was discovered in another woman who had had several children, that is multiparous woman. The remaining antigens Duffy 3, 4, 5, and 6 were discovered 20 years later. In this blood group system, we have only six known antigens. Six known antigens. And the ISBT symbol for the antigens in this blood group system is FY. An ISBT number for the antigens in this blood group system is 008. The antigens of this blood group system are FYA, FYB, FY3, FY4, FY5, and FY6. Six known antigens. Now, let us look at the nature of these antigens. These antigens are proteins, just like antigens in RH, KEL, and also KEL blood group system that we have discussed earlier. The Duffy glycoprotein is a transmembrane protein that spans the red blood cell membrane several times and has an extracellular N terminal domain and a cytoplasmic C terminal domain. It has an extracellular N terminal domain and obviously an intracellular C terminal domain. The Duffy glycoprotein is also called Duffy antigen chemokine receptor. Duffy antigen chemokine receptor. It has structural similarity with G protein coupled receptors. But so far, it has not been shown to be a member of this family. The binding site for chemokines, the binding site for malaria parasites like P. virus, P. malaria, and also the major antigenic domains are all located in the overlapping region in the extracellular and terminal domain. Looking at this particular diagram, the diagram shows the
binding sites of P vivers, the chemokines, the interleukin eggs, ranches on the membrane of the robust cell. If you look at this diagram very well, you will see the, the extracellular domain and also the intracellular domain, and then the glycodophy glycoprotein spanning the robust cell membrane seven good times. Then these Duffy antigens, where are they found in the system? The Duffy antigens are expressed on red blood cells, like we have just shown in the previous diagram, the endothelial cells that line the blood vessels, epithelial cells of the kidney collecting ducts, Long alveoli and also on the surface of Purkinje cells of the cerebellum in the brain. You can also find Duffy antigens in the thyroid gland, the colon, and the spleen. Even in individuals who do not produce Duffy antigens on their red blood cells they can also express Duffy antigens elsewhere in their system. Functions of this Duffy glycoprotein, what do they do in the system? Research has shown that Duffy glycoproteins are chemokine receptors. They are chemokine receptors. They help in inflammatory processes, they bind the chemicals that are secreted during inflammation and also recruits other blood cells to the area of damage. These chemokines include what we call acute inflammation chemokines, chronic inflammation chemokines, interleukin cysts, rantis, which is known as regulated on activation normal T expressed and secreted. Now, research has shown that animals that research has shown that animals that do not have Duffy antigens do not suffer from any adverse effects. What am I trying to say? That Duffy antigens, even though they have this chemokine, they, they function as chemokine receptor on the surface of the red cell membrane. That's one of their functions. But people that do not have these Duffy antigens, for one reason or the other, live perfectly normal life. Their red blood cells appear normal. Therefore, research has shown that it is not really physiologically important. People that don't have it, they don't suffer from anything that is grossly abnormal. Their immune system functions perfectly well, and red blood cells morphology is also very, very normal. Another function Another important function of uh, Duffy glycoprotein, in addition to being a chemokine receptor, is that it also serves as a receptor for plasmodium virus and plasmodium nolesi, which are malaria parasites that invade the rest of their malaria parasite. That serve as Duffy antigens serve as receptor for malaria parasites, plasmodium virus, and plasmodium domestic. Now, red blood cells that lack Duffy antigens, research has shown that these cells are relatively resistant to invasion 
by P fibers and P non-listing. The red cells that lack Duffy antigens are resistant to invasion by P fibers and P non-listing. This obviously has influenced the distribution of this malaria parasite in the various population. Antibodies that are produced against Duffy antigens, their characteristics and their reactivity. These antibodies are immune antibodies. They are immune because they are produced only after immune stimulation. After an individual has been sensitized or after immunization or exposure to a known Duffy antigen, they are not natural occurring antibodies. Because they are immune antibodies, they are mostly IgG antibodies. IgM is very rare. Yes, they do not bind the complement. They don't bind the complement. But they can cause transmission reaction. Typically, a moderate delayed transmission reaction. They can cause transmission reaction. Typically, moderate delayed transmission reaction. And anti-FYA, anti-FYB, and anti-FY3 have been implicated in this transition reaction. Yes, they can cause hemorrhagic disease of the newborn, but mostly mild form of hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. And FTFYA and and FY3 have also been implicated in mild hemolytic disease of the newborn. Now, it is important for us to know how these antibodies react in various techniques or conditions, different conditions, because it helps us to also identify them when we are doing antibody screening and antibody identification. Now, it's good for you to note that FYA and FYB antigens are destroyed by proteolytic enzymes. Example, papain. They are destroyed by proteolytic enzymes. Example, papain. Therefore, anti-FYA and anti-FYB are not reactive by enzyme technique. So you don't expect to isolate anti-FYA and anti-FYB you know, by doing enzyme technique. They are neutralized by enzymes such as papain. Again, storage of free blood cells in low pH or low ionic strength saline list solutions causes progressive loss of antigen reactivity. It causes storage of red blood cells. Therefore, when red cells are stored in low pH and least solutions, and you want to isolate uh, anti-FYA and anti-FYB, you should remember this. There is a progressive loss in, of antigen reactivity. Therefore, when the red cells that contain these antigens are stored in low pH and low ionic saline, solution. Then, anti-FYA is relatively common and is majorly stimulated by transfusion. Same with anti-FYB, stimulated by transfusion and pregnancy. Then, anti-FY3, rare, but they are mostly produced by individuals who are both who do not have both FYA antigen and FYB antigen. They are FYA negative and FYB negative. 
They can also, this anti fi 3 is capable of causing the multi transfusion reaction and mild the multi disease of the newborn. And formation of anti fi 3 is preceded by, uh, you know, by formation of anti FYA. Now, frequency of frequency of Duffy antigens. We have about, studies have shown that we have about antigen FYA, we have about 66% in Caucasians and 10% in Blacks, 99% in Asians. Why FYB? We have about 83% in Caucasians, 23% in Blacks, and then 18.5% in Asians. Antigen FY3, we have 100% in Caucasians, 32% in Blacks, and 99.9% in Asians. Duffy phenotypes. There are only, there are four men Duffy phenotypes. Four men Duffy phenotypes. As shown, on the slide, we have number one, FYA plus B minor. These are individuals that have Duffy A antigen, but they don't have the B antigen. They are FYA plus B minus bracket close. We have the second people that have both Duffy A antigen and Duffy B antigen. Designated as FY bracket A plus, B plus bracket closes. We have the same group of individuals that they don't have Duffy A antigen, but they have Duffy B antigen. Designated as FY bracket A minus, B plus bracket A closes. And we have the fourth group of individuals. That's Duffinol. These ones are called Duffinol phenotype. They don't have Duffy A antigen and they don't have Duffy B antigen. Presented as FY bracket A minus B minus bracket closes. Now, these phenotypes, let's just look at the adaptive as shown on the uh, table. The phenotype, the genotype, and then their frequency in whites, frequency in blacks, and then the activity with anti Duffy A and anti Duffy B. The first group of individuals are those who have Duffy A antigen, but they don't have the Duffy B antigen. Obviously, their genotype should be FYA, FYA. And they have, they are approximately 20% in whites and 9% in black. And because they have Duffy antigen, they will react positively with Duffy anti-A and negatively with Duffy anti-B. The second group of individuals that have Duffy antigen A and Duffy antigen B. Obviously, as shown on the table, their genotype is FYA, FYB. You have about 47% of, of these people in white and 1% of them in black. Then, because they have both uh, Duffy antigen, the both Duffy A and Duffy B, they will react positively to anti Duffy A and anti Duffy B. Now, we have the third group of individuals, those people that I said they are Duffy nor phenotype. They don't have the uh, Duffy A antigen, and they don't have the Duffy B antigen. These people, they are known, these people, you have about 0.1% in whites, and they have about 68% in blacks. And obviously, because they don't have both the Duffy A antigen and Duffy B antigen, they will react negatively to anti Duffy A antibody and also anti Duffy B antibody. But the next group, as shown on the table, they are those that have, they don't have the Duffy A antigen, but they have the Duffy B 
antigen. And their genotype is FYB, FYB. And you have 33% of these people in white, 22 AM class. And because they don't have the Duffy A antigen, they react negatively with anti Duffy A. And they have the Duffy B, so they react positively with anti Duffy B antibody. Uh, antibody. Now, we also have another phenotype, you know, a minor phenotype that is FYS. FYS. And again, the FYX allele encodes the FYB antigens, but it is only weakly expressed because a reduced amount of Duffy protein, and it is not always as detected by anti Duffy B. The Duffy null phenotype, FYA minus B minus, is rare among the Caucasian and Asian populations, as we've seen on the table. Whereas, it is the most common phenotype in blacks, occurring in over two-thirds of the black population. The racial variation in the distribution of Duffy antigens is a result of a positive selection project. The absence of Duffy antigens on red blood cells makes the red blood cells more resistant to invasion by malaria parasites, B virus, and P. Nolesi. Now, let us look at the genetics. Genetics. Let us look at the genetics of this Duffy antigens. The Duffy antigens. The Duffy glycoprotein is encoded by the FYG. Duffy glycoprotein is encoded by the FYG, of which there are only two alleles, the FYA and FYB. These two alleles are co-dominant, meaning that if the FYA is inherited, from one parent, and the FYB is inherited from the other, both the gene product Duffy A and Duffy B antigens will be expressed on the surface of the red blood cell. Now, the Duffy locus is located on chromosome one, and the two main alleles, FYA and FYB, differ by a single nucleotide at position one to five. And they likewise encode FYA and FYB antigens that differ by a single amino acid at residue 42. Non phenotype. Dolphin non phenotype, like I said earlier, those individuals that are not able to produce Duffy A antigen and also Duffy B antigen on the surface of the red cells. So there are main two descriptions of Duffy null phenotype. First is group of individuals that they are not able to produce Duffy antigen, that is Duffy A and Duffy B antigen on the surface of the red blood cell, but they can have these antigens on other parts of their body like endothelial uh, cells of the blood vessels, kidney, brain, and colon, spleen. But there are also another, another group of individuals that they are not able to produce these antigens on the surface of the red cells, and they are also not able to produce it in any other part of their system. Now, there are two genetic backgrounds that give rise to dolphin negative phenotype. The most, commonly, the most common one is a mutation in the promoter region of the FYB island, which abolishes the expression of dolphin glycoprotein 
in red blood cells. But the protein is still produced in other types of cells. Now, this erythroid specific mutation is found in Af African American, 70% African American, and you can also find it in approximately 100% in West Africans. Those in West African have, they have about 100% prevalence of this type of mutation. Therefore, you find mostly um, Duffy non phenotype of this nature in African Americans and also people from West Africa. They have, they cannot produce Duffy antigen on the surface of their red cells, but they are able to produce Duffy antigen in other tissues and organs of the body. Because of this, these people, they cannot make anti duffy 3 Because they have this Duffy antigen in other parts of the body, they cannot make an anti duffy 3 Then, another set of individuals that are not Duffy non phenotype are individuals whose status resulted from point mutation that introduces a premature stop codon into the coding sequence. In this type of individual, it involves, you know, it evolves as a result of points mutation that introduces a premature stop codon in the coded sequence. And because of this, these individuals are not able to produce Duffy antigens on the surface of the red blood cell. And Duffy antigens are also absent from tissues in the individuals. They don't, from, they are not able to produce Duffy antigens on the surface of red cells. And they're also not able to produce it in any other tissue in the system. This set of individuals are capable of producing strong anti Duffy trait when they are exposed to these uh, antigens. When they are exposed to these antigens. Okay? Now let us look at the relationship between Duffy antigens and malaria parasites. Of all the four plasmodial species that routinely cause malaria parasite, malaria, malaria infection in human beings, research has shown that P for separate is responsible for the majority of the fatal cases. But further that in some parts of the world, like Asia and America, B virus is the more common cause of malaria. And to cause this disease, B virus must first enter the human red blood cell. And it does this by binding to the N-terminal part of the extracellular domain of the Duffy glycoprotein through the cystine-rich region of the Duffy binding protein. Through the cystine region of the Duffy binding protein. Individuals with Duffy non phenotype, research has shown they do not express Duffy protein on their red blood cells. Therefore, they are immune to B virus infection. Interestingly, the people that are Duffy non phenotype, people that are FY, a minus B minus phenotype is most common in areas where there is little P virus eh? malaria. Example in West Africa, there is high frequency of Duffin or phenotype, like we said earlier, and therefore a low incidence of P virus eh? malaria. Therefore, a low incidence of P virus malaria. This may be because the pre existence of a high frequency of this null phenotype, you know, prevented P virus malaria from becoming endemic in West Africa. Such has actually proven this. Yes, Duffy antigens are needed 
for the inversion of red blood cell by B vivers. It is also the same thing with another malaria parasite called uh, P. nolesti. In 1975, Miller itself found that Duffy antigen A and Duffy antigen B could be a receptor for P. nolesti. And the resistance to the inversion of this metastasis in blast was due to Duffy phenotype. It's been established that to invade red blood cell, B vivers and B nolesti depend on interaction with the Duffy A and Duffy B antigens. Clinical significance of Duffy antibodies. Duffy antibodies are capable of causing blood transfusion reaction. Antibodies against Duffy antigens A, B, 3, and 5 have all been implicated as a cause of a transfusion reaction. Antidoffy A is more commonly found in patients who are of African descent, in whom Dauphinol phenotype is more common and have sickle cell anemia, and therefore may require multiple blood transfusions. Dauphin anti antibody can also cause hemolytic disease of the newborn. And like I said earlier, it is typically the type of hemolytic disease of the newborn caused by Duffy antibody is typically mild. Maybe this is because these Duffy antigens, in addition to being seen on the surface of red blood cell, or expressed on the surface of red blood cell, are also expressed in other tissues of the body, especially the endothelial layers of the blood vessels. Therefore, when these antibodies are is, uh, produced, after being, the mother being sensitized, remember there are no natural occurring antibodies. The mother who is obviously negative needs to be sensitized by introduction of uh, uh, this antibody, this antigen into the circulation, either through pregnancy or through blood transfusion. When they are sensitized, they produce these antibodies. And because they are immune antibodies and IgG, they can cross the placenta. So subsequent pregnancy, they can cross the placenta to harm the unborn child. Remember, the immunity disease of the newborn that can be caused by these antibodies are typically mine. Maybe because as they navigate through the placenta to pass through the, to get to the baby, some of the antigen, Duffy antigen that are found on the end of the cells of the blood vessels can neutralize these antibodies. So at the end of the day, Whatever the, the, the end result of sensitization on the surface of the red blood cell might lead to mild hemorrhagic disease of the new blood. I'm sure that you have learned, you know, something from today's lecture. You can confidently say something about Duffy blood group system, the antigen that are found in the Duffy blood group system, the antibodies that are found in the Duffy blood group system, and the relationship between Duffy antigens and malaria parasite infection, and of course, the clinical importance of uh, Duffy antibodies. Thank you very much for being part of this uh, lecture. I expect to get feedback from you. Thank you.